I want to preach on something today God put in my spirit and my heart uh, this week. And um, I normally preach a lot of series, but God just downloaded this word into my spirit. And I believe it's time to, to give it to you. I want to preach on a subject today called Through It All. Through It All. Everybody say, Through It All. Come on, tell, tell your neighbor, Through It All. Yeah, amen. Through It All. I've been through some stuff in my life, but through it all, God has been there every moment. I've seen some stuff in my life, but God has been with me through it all. And uh, this morning, I, I'm thankful that we serve a God. And how many of you are thankful this morning that you serve a God that through it all, I'm talking about I'm good times, bad times. I'm talking about through, through family times, through your children acting cray-cray. Come on. I'm talking about through it all, God has never left you. God's never forsaken you. God's always been your prop man, picking you up through it all. Come on, somebody praise God this morning. That we serve a God that through it all, through surgery, through a bad doctor's report, that through it all, God has never left you. I can honestly God say this morning, that's, I've, I've seen that and I've experienced that in my life. I want to give you a Bible verse really quick, and I want, to, I want to plow the ground with this because I'm telling you, God is doing a mighty work here at Elkhorn Baptist Church. I'm blessed to be your pastor. The Bible says in Psalms 37, 25, you've heard me quote this many times, but today I want to go a little bit deeper with it. The Bible says, Psalms 37, verse 25, I'm reading out the King James. It says these words, I have been young, <laughs> I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, hallelujah, nor his seed begging for bread. I have been young and now I am old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. I love this because this is King David. And if anybody knows anything about King David, everybody says, well, King David committed adultery. He, he killed Uriah and he had a, an adulterous affair with Bathsheba and his first child died in the infancy of, his, of the mother's womb. And you see all these things, but don't forget about this. The Bible says that King David was the apple, hallelujah, the apple of God's eyes. The Bible says that King David was a God chaser. King David, he may have chased the kings and, and, and killed the kingsmen, but he was a God chaser. He was the apple of God's eye. And I love this, but listen, there were two things. I want to think about how powerful this is, what I'm getting ready to tell you. The Bible says, King David said, I've never seen two things. Now, y'all think about this. He killed a giant. He killed a bear. He killed a lion. He, he, he went through the valley of the shadow of death. And David said, there's two things I have never seen in my whole life. Now, I want y'all to think about this one. He said, number one, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Hallelujah. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And number two, I've never seen his seed begging for bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, I've got some good news for you guys this morning. God dropped this down in my spirit. He says, God said, I, in other words, I'll never turn my back against you. Listen, God will never walk away from your problem. Matter of fact, when God is with you, I believe God is facing you. I don't believe God's got his back against you right now. I don't believe that God has forgotten about you, sir. Ma'am, I know you're going through the valley of the shadow of death and there's problems in your life right now, but you've got a God that says, I've never, hallelujah, I'll never forsake the righteous. I'll never, you'll never have to beg for bread in your life. And God, God's so good. He says, matter of fact, I'm going to give you two bodyguards. I'm going to give you goodness and I'm going to give you mercy to follow you all the days of your life. I've got one in front of you, I've got one behind you, and I've got my Holy Ghost inside of you. God says, I'll never leave you. I won't forsake you. You'll never have to beg for bread. I wish somebody at the first service would get this promise in your spirit right now. He said these words, goodness and mercy. I love, God says, I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to turn my back against you. I'm not going to lie, there's been times in my life I thought God forgot about me. There's been times where I felt, and I said, God, did you not see what just happened? God, did you not just hear what they said? God, do you not see how things are going at church? God, did you not? And God says, yes, Brian, I've seen every bit of it, but you've got to trust me, son. You've got to trust wherever I lead you, I will not, hallelujah, forsake you. And this spirit started just really getting in my spirit. 
this sermon did. The enemy, listen, listen to me very carefully. The enemy would love, would love for me and you to reach a point in our lives where we don't believe there's any hope or there is a future for you. Oh, the enemy would give anything. Oh, you, listen, the enemy don't mind y'all coming to church. He just don't want you to participate. The enemy don't mind y'all singing. He just don't want you to get the word. The enemy would do anything to make you lose your hope and to make you lose your future. I want you to listen to me this morning. God does not, and you're going to have to show me in the Bible, because we got some people that think that God has plagued you, that some people says, well, God must have given up on me. Listen, God said these words in his Bible. God does not want his children to be worried. Y'all help me. He don't want you to be tormented. He don't want you to live in fear in your life. He said, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. I gave you the spirit of love, power, hallelujah, and a sound mind. It's what God wants for your life. God don't want you to be scared and nervous and upset. God don't want you to start acting cray-cray. Hey, hey. He don't want you to do that. And listen, I've said this many times, many times, but let me preface this just a little bit before I get into the Word. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, God mentions 28 seasons. Everybody say 28. He mentions 28 seasons. There's, there's a season to, to cry. There's a season to laugh. There's a time to dance. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. He mentions 28 seasons in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, but not one time, but not one time does he say stop. Not one time does he say quit. Not one time does he say just give up. Not one time does he say just surrender to the enemy. Church, God is all about regathering, hallelujah, about regathering, renewing life, and reclaiming and refreshing you. And listen, the, listen, God, people has put a bullseye on God's back. If something goes bad in their life, we blame God. 9-11 happens, we blame God. What if I told you it's us, it's we as Christians have turned our back against God, but God has not turned his back against us. God is begging for his children to come back home. God is begging for his children to redeem the time. He said, don't fall asleep, you old sleeper, you old sluggard person. He said these words, he said, rise up in Jesus' name. When I think about God, I think about him restoring the years that the canker worm, the palmer, and the palm worm and the, the locusts have stolen from our lives. How many of y'all have, and be honest with me this morning, you've had some things stolen from you out of your life from the enemy. Maybe you're sitting here today and you don't have that joy that you once had in your life. Maybe you're not on fire like you once was in your life. And listen to me, here's what I have found out about the fire of the Holy Ghost. You've got to feed it wood. And whenever you feed it, and you, you, if, if you're sitting around a campfire, and that old fire starts getting dim and going down, you got to put another log on the fire, right? Same way as the Holy Spirit. If you're sitting here this morning and you don't feel the Holy Ghost, maybe you stop putting fire in it. Come on. Hallelujah. When I think about God restoring and renewing someone, I think about the prodigal son. I think about this story because, man, I'm going to tell you something. This was my story. <laughs> this was my life. And I know some of you may be righteous and glorified and set aside and nothing's ever went wrong with you in your life. you got a bunch of money in your bank account and all this. But I'm telling you, listen to me. I believe the stories in this Bible, not just for you, but also for me. The Bible says about the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, verse 20. I love this. Y'all okay? Say amen. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Good stuff. Verse 20 in Luke 15, it says, And he arose. And came to his father. Notice this. He came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him. I love, I think, I'm thinking about Jesus right now, and he's looking down from heaven on me and you right now. He saw him. And watch this. He didn't say he grabbed the Holy Ghost whip and tied him to a whipping post. And no, he said, I had compassion. I love when God, I, I really think God loves when his children come back to their senses. I really think God loves when his children say, you know what, I am so tired of living with the pigs. I am so tired of talking like the world. I'm so tired of acting like it. The Bible says he had compassion, and I love this, listen to this, and he ran. He ran and fell on his neck, and he kissed him. Y'all hear me? He ran. He saw him. 
He didn't say, son, when I get you home, I'm going to whip you. No, he didn't say that. He said, son, it is so good to see you. And I really believe that is a picture of the church today. That God is not in heaven saying, if you mess up one more time, I'm going to get you. I believe what God is saying, will you please come back home? I am waiting for you. I know you've been eating with the pigs. I know your life isn't what you thought you was going to be. I know you're acting cray-cray right now, but we serve a God. I am so tired of people not giving God the glory that he truly deserves. He died for us for heaven's sakes. Would you put your son on the cross and then turn your back on something that you died for? No way. There's no way. And I really believe what God is telling me, that he wants me to tell you today, listen to me, no matter how far away of God you may feel right now, oh, listen, you can be a Christian and sit in a sanctuary and be far away from God. Come on. Come on, church. You can worship God. You can hold your hands up, but you can be like the prodigal, and you can be eating with the pigs. Somebody can testify on that one. Just because you're here don't mean you're a Christian. Just because you're here don't mean you have a good relationship with Christ. Just because I'm a preacher, shh, don't mean I'm not eating with the pigs this week. Y'all see what I'm saying? You know when church becomes real? When you become real. You, when church will become real, this word of God that is active and sharpening two-edged sword will become active in your life when you activate the word in your life. Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost. The Bible says these words, he, and I really believe that he says, no matter how far away of God you may feel right now today, listen to me, if you'll just start running, if you'll just start running toward your Father, Running toward Jesus Christ. If you'll start running toward Jesus, his, listen to me, his love will fall upon you. You may have not got anything out of that word right there I just gave you, but I'm telling you, listen to me. God is, the Bible says God is love. His name is Abba, Father, Daddy. And listen to me, he says, if you'll start running toward me, my love will fall on you once again. His grace, hallelujah, will kiss you once again. He will restore you. Come on, help me. He'll restore you once again. The Father, think about this. I've, never read, I've read this a thousand times, but I, this is the first time this week this word really penetrated in me. The Bible says the Father fell upon him. Did y'all hear me? The Father who represents God, the prodigal who represents me and you, he finally come to his sins. He says, you know what? This life that I am living is no good. It's no good. The Bible says he come to his senses. I can just see this prodigal right now climbing over the fence of the pig pen. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to get so tired of sleeping with the pigs and eating with the pigs and talking with the pigs that we've got to get so tired that we put one leg over the fence and get out of there. I just wonder how long the journey was from the pig pen to home. How many of y'all have ever done anything wrong in your life and all of a sudden you knew you had to face daddy when you got home? <laughs> that drive from the pig pen <laughs> home was tough. Tough. I just wonder what that kid was thinking. God, what's daddy going to do? Did I lose my inheritance? Is daddy going to give my, 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 my younger brother, my older brother, is he going to give them my inheritance now? Would daddy receive me back? I've messed up. I've ate with the pigs. I've slept with the prostitutes. I've done wrong in my life. How is daddy going to treat me? And I've just seen in my spirit, I'm telling y'all, this word got in my heart. Because so often, when we feel guilty, we feel condemned. Listen to me very carefully. If you feel condemned, it is of the enemy. It is of the enemy. The Bible says I, that in Romans 8, 1, that God did not come to condemn. He came to save and to set the prisoners free. And that's where we're at today. I can see the prodigal at a distance. He sees his daddy at the door. And all of a sudden, the front door comes open, and the daddy sees his son at a distance. He didn't sit there and start going like that. No, he started running. He started running. I want y'all to listen to me. I'm not making light of, of, of sin. 
Sin will separate you from God. But listen to me very carefully. If you're under my teaching right now, and your heart is beating really fast, and you're sitting there and you say, Brian, I just feel far away from God. Listen to me. Get tired of smelling like a pig. Get tired of living with the pigs. Get tired of talking like the pigs. Listen to me in Jesus' name. I, I love this. The Bible says the Father fell on him. In other words, God's love. I, just, I picture this in my spirit. When he fell on his son, love fell back on him. Recovery fell back on him. Restoration fell on him. Mercy, hallelujah, fell on him. Forgiveness, somebody help me, fell on him again. When he felt lost and sleeping with the pigs, his daddy was sitting there going, no, just come home. Just come home. Just come home. And church, how many of you know, I wrote this down in my notes, all we need today is the Father to fall on us once again. Oh, come on. I'm too big. No, you're not. All we need here today, some of you, you may have lost your worship and you feel distant from God. You feel that God has forgotten about you. You've been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. And you're like, God, you're not even hearing me. I got some news for you this morning. God spoke into my spirit, and I wrote this down. He said, if my children will run toward me, my glory, my love, my mercy, my forgiveness, my restoration will fall upon them. How many of y'all need that? Come on. Come on, first service. You need God to fall back down on you one more time. Don't act religious. That's what's wrong with the churches today. You ask somebody, say, hey, how you doing? Oh, everybody's good. Won't you be honest, sir, right now? How's your relationship with Jesus Christ? How is your relationship with Jesus Christ right now? Do you feel like that you're in the pig pen? Do you feel like God has just forgot about you? Do you feel like you're just an old chapter in the books that has been read and forgotten about? I'm telling y'all in Jesus' name, you know how you get restored? You got to get tired of the pig pen. Y'all know what insanity is, right? Doing the same thing over and over and over, but expecting a different outcome. How many of you know we got a bunch of insane Christians? <laughs> we got a bunch of insane churches. They refuse to do anything different. Because Beulah her four and no more has always done it like that. Watch this. I got news for y'all this morning. If you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. Come on. I just felt the Lord said to me, you tell the people, my glory, my love, my mercy is getting ready to fall back on them. Did y'all hear me? Elkhorn, listen to me very carefully. Seasons will come and go. Seasons will come and go. There's 28 seasons he mentions in Ecclesiastes. But Elkhorn, I want to speak something over you today prophetically. That through it all, I started thinking about Elkhorn Baptist Church 100 years ago. The precious people that sat over in a sanctuary down in the river that was worshiping God. They had to move locations to come up here. And they went from the old sanctuary to the whack to the new sanctuary. And I look at y'all guys today that through it all, God has never given up on you through it all. He saved you when you were sleeping with a pig. He blessed you through it all. He went through the fire with you through it all. When you was drunk and undone and in a ditch, He never gave up on you through it all. I need somebody who's been through some stuff to say, God has never given up on me through it all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He filled me with the Holy Ghost through it all. When people gave up on you, God, he, he's right there with you. Through it all. I wrote this down. Listen, this is so powerful. You can't make it home on your own. If you're a note taker, you better take that note right there. You can't make it home on your own. We got people, I was talking to a man about a month ago. He was at the hospital. The doctor had given him probably, I think it was 30 days to live. And I went to the hospital and I was speaking with him. And here's what he said. 
And I don't know if it's where the sermon was starting to birth in me or what. He said, I've been too bad. I've done too much in my life for God to ever love me and save me. I have felt like that before. Some of you are under my teaching right now. You think you've gone too far. You've made God promise after promise after promise after promise. God, if you'll bless me, I'll never do it again. And for some odd reason, God just keeps blessing and blessing and blessing. Can I tell you why? Because he loves you. Listen to me, Elcorn. God is crazy about you. And I'm just going to be one crazy preacher that's going to get up here and say, you know what? Through it all, through the drugs and through the alcohol, through it all, God's been with me through it all. Through it all, he's never gave up on me and he's never gave up on you. If God was through with you, sir, you'd be DOA. How many of y'all can testify you probably should have been dead a long time ago? But somebody named Jesus Christ who died on an old rugged cross, they put him in a grave, but three days later, through it all, he saved your soul. See, I don't want to ever forget where God's brought me from. I don't want to ever forget where God has brought me from. Because the day you forget where God's brought you from, you'll lose your praise. I'm going to end with this. Praise team, you guys come. The prodigal son couldn't make it home on his own. You can't make it home on your own. You can't, guys. You cannot. There was a little boy, this is a true story, over in England. They had a statue of Jesus Christ in the center of their, their, their circle there in downtown. And this little boy got lost from his mom and his dad. And the police picked him up, and he uh, went to the police station. They said, young man, what's your number? And he said, I don't know. He said, young man, what's your address? He's like, sir, I don't know. I, I, I don't know my phone number. I don't know my address. I, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. And the, the police officer says, young man, is there anything that you remember for me to help you get home? That little boy said these words. This is a true story. He said, yeah, there's a statue of Jesus downtown. If you can get me to Jesus, I can find my way home from there. Oh, yeah, can I tell y'all today, listen to me. I don't know where y'all are at, how far away from God that you may seem right now. You may be the prodigal living in the pig pen. I don't know who this word is. Maybe it's just for me. I don't know. But if it is, I accept it. You've got to get tired sleeping with the pigs. You gotta get tired of smelling like them and talking like them and acting like them. You gotta get tired of it. You gotta make it in your mind, I'm going home. I'm going home. And I love this story because, man, this is my life. I'm going home. Brother Howard, I started thinking about going home. This is not our home. Oh my God. This, El, I love Elkhorn. I love my wife. I love you. But guys, this is not our home. We give more time and more effort to a, a physical, earthly place than we do an eternal home than where I'm going. Can I tell y'all some good news? Are y'all ready? I'm going to give it to you anyhow. I don't know when it's going to happen. But it's going to happen. And it could be today. That horn that we talk about so often, that horn that we blow here at this church, one day, Scott, I believe this, my life is banking on what I'm preaching to you now. It's gonna blow. And if you're in the pig pen, you need to get out of the pig pen, sir. Young man, you need to get out of the pig pen. Jesus is waiting for you right now. You say, Brian, where's he at? He's in your chair. He's at this altar. He's in your heart. One day, all this stuff that we're doing here on earth, we will give an account for up there. 
Y'all hear me? Churches waste more time on non-eternal things. That person you're mad at, watch this, y'all ready? <laughs> They're making you sleep with the pigs. That person that you really think that God gave you, but all their, I, I'm gonna go rated R on y'all, y'all okay? That all they wanna do is have sex and all they wanna do is party, all they wanna do is smoke dope and drugs, watch this. God did not give you that person, sir. Because what God gives, is a good gift. It's a good gift. I started thinking about what if, what if the horn sounds right now? And I mean this. The other day, Howard, for the first time in my life, I've always said this, God come. God come. But for the first time in my life, I meant it. See, it's easy just to sing a song. Boy, when you mean that song, even if, y'all know why that song got birthed? Because his son was going through diabetes. He said, God, I know you can heal my son if you will, but even if you don't, I'm going to praise you. God, I know I can walk on water, but even if I don't, God, I'm going to praise you. God, I know you can do whatever you want to do. But God, even if you take your hand away from me, I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. You've got to get an even if attitude. Not based upon your neighbor's worship. <laughs> Not based upon how your preacher preaches. Not based on how they play. No matter if you miss a note, even if you do, I'm going to worship Him. No matter what, I've made my mind up. I'm going to worship Him. Time is drawing nigh. Y'all listen to this preacher. Time is drawing nigh. I know it's been said for hundreds of years, but today could be your last day, and I want you to act like it. If you're with the pigs right now, I want you to put one leg over that fence and I want you to start heading towards your father. He'll meet you. I mean, when I got born again at Hills Chapel Baptist Church under Brother Omer Farmer, I remember I was sitting all the way in the back and I mean the Holy Ghost was all up on me. I got the Holy Ghost fidgets. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You're sitting there, you're like, oh God, you're fidgety, you're just fidgety. And I remember... He said, if you want Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to raise your hands. I went. He said, no. If you want Jesus Christ to save you, raise your hand. And that man of God got from behind the pulpit, walked that aisle. The little boy in the very back was me. He laid his big monstrous hand on mine. He said, Brian, did you mean that? Yes, sir. And say this prayer. Dear God, dear God, I believe in you. I believe in you. And God, I'm asking you right now. God, I'm asking you right now to save me, redeem me, restore me, fall upon me. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I said that prayer and I left the pig pen. And can I be honest with y'all? My father who art in heaven, when I'm down, he's always like this. He's never doing like this. He's always like this. Brian, get up. I've got your back. I know it don't look good. I know it don't sound good. I know it don't seem good, but I've got you and I'm not letting go of you. My arms are long and they reach really low and they'll pull you out of the miry clay. So in Jesus' name, where are y'all at right now? I know it's first service. I know that some of you think, man, everything's good. I'm gonna ask you, sir, listen to me. 
for you in the pig pen today? Where are you at? So I'm going to tell you this. I'm done. God is waiting for you to stand up and to start running toward Him. And the Bible says He saw Him at a distance. He had compassion on Him. And He ran and He fell upon Him. When's the last time y'all felt God fall upon you? Fall upon you. So in Jesus' name, you stand. I don't know where y'all are at. I don't know what's going on in your life between you and God right now, between you and Jesus Christ. Maybe you've lost your worship. Maybe you've lost your joy. Maybe it's been a while since you felt God really fall upon you and really love you. Maybe you're so discouraged right now you can't even worship. I don't know. God loves you God loves you I want everybody to say God loves me y'all ready God loves me God loves you this altar is open all I'm asking y'all to do you ready y'all ready this is crazy you gotta ask people this in church <clears throat> just be honest Just be honest and tell God how you feel. And he'll touch you in Jesus' name. Father God, I've delivered the mail. May your people respond. And God, I had to come out of the pig pen. Lord God. I didn't even realize I was in it. I thought everything was good. But God, when you start evaluating and examining your heart, and the truth comes to the surface. God, it has set you free. So God, today, right now, in Jesus' name, bless your people. Call them home. In Jesus' name, amen. You come. Come on. God's waiting for you. God is waiting for you, sir. Get out of the pig pen. Get out of the pig pen. Get out of the pig pen. Make your mind up. Get out of the pig pen. And God will meet you right where you're at. In Jesus' name.